Blessings to you on this day. Let us pray. O loving Creator God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, our strength and source of life. Amen. As we gather together in worship today, we are a couple of days past a most difficult Thanksgiving. So many of us have had a, a sad Thanksgiving. It has been a subdued Thanksgiving for many. For some, Thanksgiving has turned out to be better than expected. I hope that you are practicing gratitude. I hope that each day you're making time to give thanks for one or two things in your lives. And it's not too late if you haven't started. I want to express my gratitude for today's Bible readings. I want to give thanks for the prophet Isaiah and the psalmist. In today's Hebrew scripture readings, Isaiah and the psalmist have said what some of us are feeling. Sometimes we need others to say or put to words what we may not want to say out loud. The prophet Isaiah longs for God to come and straighten out everything that is wrong in the world. God can do this because God is powerful. God can move mountains. God can cause a, a bush to burn without it being consumed. God sent the deliverer Moses to lead God's people out of slavery and bondage. Isaiah cries that God is hidden. He asks, where are you, God? The psalmist laments that God must be angry with the prayers of the people. What other explanation could there be for this mess of a world? The prophet Isaiah and the psalmist implicitly understand that God is not to blame for the mess of the world. Human beings are. We are. We made a mess of the world, and we need to clean up the mess, learn from our mistakes, and do better. For Isaiah declares that we are the work of God's hands. We are God's beloved people. God is good. We will turn to face God and let God's love shine upon us. In today's gospel reading, Jesus acknowledges the fear that people have about end times and that it will be some kind of catastrophic event. People want to know when the world is going to end. When will it happen? What are the signs that will let us know? Because right now the world is not feeling or looking okay. The world is not okay. It's not doing okay. But Jesus offers no easy answers. Jesus doesn't give us a date. Jesus says, I don't know when this is going to happen. Only God knows. This particular passage in Mark 13 is known as the little apocalypse because it uses apocalyptic language. The purpose of apocalyptic literature is not to tell us when the world will end or how it will end or to sow fear. The purpose of apocalyptic literature is to inspire hope. The root word for apocalypse is to reveal. Apocalyptic literature reveals the truth. We may feel that God has abandoned us or that God has chosen to hide God's self from us, but the truth is neither. And knowing the date of when the world will end is not what matters. Looking for the signs is not the best use of your energy and attention. It is not what Jesus meant when he said, stay awake and be alert. Jesus is not telling us to stay awake and be alert for the end of the world. Jesus is telling us to be awake and alert to the presence of God in the world. And some of us may not want to be alert. Some of us may be hyper aware and all too awake to what is happening in the world. And sometimes it can feel like a burden. That God is asking too much of, is asking too much. 
Bring those feelings and thoughts into your prayer life. For Mark's community that heard Jesus' words, it was a time of desolation, chaos, and bewilderment. It was around 60, 60 to 70 CE, during or just after the disastrous Jewish revolt against the Roman imperial state. The temple in Jerusalem had been destroyed. It was a catastrophic event in the life of the Jews. People lost their homes, their livelihoods, families and friends. So on this first Sunday of Advent in the year 2020, it seems to me that Mark's words may give us what we need to hear. In this time of Corvin 19, we need a message of hope. Hope in the time of Corvin 19. A message of hope for the exhausted nurse and doctor, for the worn out grocery store worker, for the tired truck driver delivering food to marketplaces, for the stressed out, stressed out working mother trying to help her children do remote learning, for the tireless teacher doing remote teaching, for the homeless person who will fall asleep tonight under a bridge, for the displaced refugee in a tent or cell, for the heartbroken addict, for the lonely prisoner, and yes, a message of hope that all wrongs will be righted, a message of hope that creation will be restored. And we wait where we are. And as we wait with hope, we continue to, to discern God's will for us. What are you hearing from God? Advent means coming. It is a time of want, waiting for what is to come. It is a time of longing for what is to come. It is a time of praying for what is to come. We wait for what will come to reveal the truth of God, for the gift of the good news that comes in the birth of baby Jesus, who grows up to preach, teach, and live the good news of God's love. And in this curious reality of a faithful life, we live in multiple spaces of time the now and the not yet. On this day, we light the first candle of hope. It is an act of proclamation. It is an act of affirmation. It is an act of resistance. We proclaim that hope is real. It is more powerful than despair. We light this candle of hope for all those who need it. For those here at Morsmere, in Richfield, in Bergen County, in New Jersey, all the states and around the world, and all nations and countries. For our neighbor that will go to bed hungry tonight. For those who live in the shadow of injustices based on ethnicity, gender, and sexual orientation. In the face of hunger, we light a candle of hope. In the face of injustice, in the face of despair, we light a candle of hope. The light from this candle is telling us that God's hope is coming on earth as it already is in heaven. We light this candle of hope in gratitude, gratitude for God's love and presence in the midst of the shadows. Gratitude that God's love helps to erase the pain of loneliness, shame, and sorrow. Gratitude that God's love sustains us and gives us strength. This light of the first Advent candle also marks the start of the new church year. Unlike January 1st and the Lunar New Year, the church does not mark the start of the new year with shouts of Happy New Year at a party and watch or light fireworks. It is a quiet moment when we begin our wait for the birth of baby Jesus. It is a time of quiet preparation. And as we prepare, 
I invite you to make time each day for quiet reflection. And to help you do this, I encourage you to use an advent calendar that will structure your time, starting on December 1st and ending on Christmas Eve. Each day, go to the date on the calendar, read the passage, reflect on it, say a prayer, and give thanks to God for the gift of patience. Wherever you are, be still and know that God is with you. Be present in this time of Advent. Get ready, prepare your hearts. Welcome the beauty of the, this holy Advent season in anticipation of the joyous news of the birth of baby Jesus. God bless you. Amen.